It is rolling. Okay. All right, so I want to start with just telling them what Under the Rock is. Okay. Well, the idea came from basically a concert that I had went to, one of the sh or one of the shows that I had went to for one of the local artists, um, Kaylee, mm -hmm. and me and him were talking, and he just kind of was upset that um, not everybody was like the people he invited didn't really come. And it wasn't like just random people. It was like people he really rocked with. And he was just so upset. So, it, and then we were talking. He's like, you know, people in Rochester don't realize that there's so much raw hidden talent here. Mm -hmm. And nobody supports nobody. So, I went home and me and my best friend talked about it. And I was like, we should start up a blog. Like, you know, pretty much a blog that promotes all these artists so people can actually listen to their music. Like, somewhere free. Mm -hmm. No, like no of charge or anything, and um, just like discuss, like just kind of listen to and actually get a feel and support these artists and stuff like that. So, Word. yeah, I, I kind of see Under the Rock as being like um, the modern day newspaper for our generation, mm -hmm. you know, and generations before and after us. Because it's just like you said, a lot of artists they don't have that outlet, yeah, and um. That's it's desperately needed. So like, not just a blog, a successful blog, a blog that everyone will want to to see daily or weekly and get inspired, get yeah. inspired from. So, so what is your definition of success, and do you see yourself as being successful now where you stand? I think it, it, it depends on everybody. I think for me, being successful is do something not only that you love, but also make an impact. Not only impact within your own self and your own uh, immediate circle, but, but impact in, in, in the greater good of humanity. But it's like, success is like a fictional thing. It's like, if you feel comfortable and you feel like you've done enough and shit, right. but you want to keep going, then that's success right there. Born and raised in Rochester. Uh, yeah, a bit about my past, yes. Born and raised northeast side of Rochester. Uh, grew up on Avenue D. Um, went to Edison, went to East, got thrown out of both of them. Um, yeah, my history is I'm basically one of those statistics that everybody talks about they need to, you know, rescue. Teenage parent, uh, no money, and, um, but I, I stuck to my guns and what I believed I wanted to do, and so I do, uh, I do what I want, what I always wanted to do, mm -hmm. even though people, um, even when I was under social service and all that stuff, get my book of food stamps, they said, you know what, you're not going to be able to do this um, because the people around me didn't understand how it could be done. So you can't, you can't, you can't believe some of the people that surround you. You got to follow your heart and go at it. I just go off of whatever just comes to mind and I don't really draw anything out first. I just like go at it and I think that's the best way to do it because then it's like true sort of like if you if you plan something out too much, I feel like it starts to go away from what you originally thought. That was some quotable, <laughs> quotable stuff right there, guys. And the brand the brand came first, but then the meaning came behind it. Like I remember, I um hit the point where I was thinking about how much money I was spending on clothes and who I was actually supporting while I was doing that, and it just sort of made me think like. If you'll spend a hundred dollars on a hoodie to support somebody you don't know, it makes sense to like bring it to yourself, but then also put a meaning behind it. You know, a lot of people buy clothes and they support things that they have no, that they have like no education on. So I feel like to put something out there and let people know like what exactly I'm about, and then to also support a good cause at the same time. I feel like the purpose of the blog is, you know, for me going to school and graduating from um, School of the Arts, I was just like, okay, what do I do now? You know what I'm saying? Who do I look up to now? Yeah. And where do I go if I want to do this? And um, I feel like it's needed that, um, I feel like it's important that <laughs> students, and not only students, people that don't really don't have a, any direction see what is possible here in the city. Yeah. Because like, like you said before, there's a bunch of hidden gems here and, um, they, they just need to be discovered and people just need to open their eyes and see. Yeah. I don't feel like it should be, um, you know, what math equation can you solve? It should be like, 
where do the best mechanics work? Where do the top chefs work in Rochester? Because mm -hmm. they exist, yeah. and that's what we want to do. We want to show you where they are and show you who the greatest artists are. So, so how old are you, brother? I'm 19. 19? Yeah. I mean, you're very skilled for your age. I mean, nowadays you see prodigies that are like 12 years old painting. You know, thanks. I really appreciate that. But it's like. Where does where does the skill come from? Because this this looks like you know. Did you pick this up on your own? Did you have a mentor? Was it school? Like where did uh, you? I'd say my dad. He started me on art. He's the true OG. Mm -hmm. um, also, yeah, man. I'm am telling you, like when I started like getting into spiritual awareness and trying to find myself. That's when my art truly started to pick up. And Yvonne, I want to touch on something you talked about, you know, education in college. Um, I guess one of the things that drive me is um, uh, when I work with young people, I work with young people a lot, uh, whether it be 5 to 25, I call that young. I don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> yes, that's young. <laughs> but um, so my mission is if I don't make that investment right now in people, there's no way I should shut the hell up. I shouldn't talk shit. When I'm 65 and I'm complaining about the climate of our economy, I'm complaining about what's wrong with these young people, if I haven't done my damn part, if all I did was hide in my cave uh, and, and do my uh, mandatory movements throughout life, mow my lawn, and, you know, and I never stepped out of that realm and never sat down with someone young and asked them what they think instead of telling them what they need to think, mm -hmm. um, it's just there's so much powerful. There's so many. There's so much power in people who are are, are are not considered the people who can move things. I feel like just the whole this whole like new regime of Rochester music, like just the people who I run with, Johnny, you know what I'm saying, Sade, Arshnova, Ishmael Raps, Kai, uh, Gorilla, uh, K Jones, Ja X, Sachi S B. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, True Star, Lennon Empire. J. Lee, you know, like just this whole new regime. If I left anybody out, man, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm excited. Like just this whole new, this whole new, uh, this new breed of like niggas coming from out of Rochester, you know what I'm saying? Or Black City, Run City, as I should say. Like, though, like, I, I feel like those are my favorite, this is my favorite piece, like, this is my favorite, like, type of music. Because it's not just one dimension, it's different stories from living in the same place, but from different perspectives. It's not fair to these people like the struggling artists or the local business trying to get their business out there for you like uh, Rochester not to help them out when they're from Rochester. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's important so then that we can try to bring the community back together to support each other, help each other out, you know, instead of, well, I'm only going to help you out unless you help me out. Yeah. Just do it out of the kindness of your heart. Yeah. What the Coffee Connection was, was a kind of an entry-level employment training program for women with addiction. Um, because she just, she and I think a lot alike, um, that people would get out of um, treatment and they'd be expected to get a job right away and they weren't simply weren't ready and, and um, so, and then it would relapse. So she was shortening, what she was, um, Decreasing the le relapse rate by doing this. Um, the coffee that we have here is fair trade, organically grown, sustainably farmed. So that means all the farmers get a fair, actually get what it costs them to grow their bean plus profit, which is amazing to me that it wasn't happening before then. Um, organic, so they don't use any kind of chemicals on their plant. And sustainable, meaning they don't take down the rainforest to grow their coffee. Plus, we need to hire women, you know, um, for for several reasons. I mean, first of all, it's our mission. Um, but in order to have our mission, we need a sustainable business. In order to have a sustainable business, we need to have uh, dependable staff. And. Um, Women come to us, it, they're um, referred to us by their treatment program to do required volunteer hours, um, or they just come because they want a safe place to spend time and reconnect with people in recovery, healthy women. So see how smoky it is? Oh, that smells amazing. <laughs> Thank you.
it hasn't been difficult. It's just been a lot of pressure and stress yeah. because um, it's kind of hard, especially when you don't know where to start mm -hmm. at first. You don't know who's going to take you serious or not. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, it's just hard to start up at first. That That's all. It's, it was... It wasn't difficult doing this at all. I enjoyed it and I still enjoy it. It's just, it's kind of molding us to do better things with the blog and everything like that. Yeah, and not only with the blog, just in general, in life. You know, I've learned a lot from Jaquasia and a lot of the other team members that's helping out with the blog. And um, I feel like in, to get to this point that we're at now, um, it's been very inspiring to meet all these local artists and yeah. to hear their stories. But, um... It's also, I've also learned a lot about myself, you yeah. know, um, when you're working with people that are more efficient than you at times or less efficient than you at times, you really get to take a uh, look in the mirror and realize, you know, I got to be better, you yeah. know, because you're working. It's not just in your hands. It's not your project. It's our project. It's, it's teaching me patience right now. Lots and lots of patience because working with people who you you have to realize that they don't think like you mm -hmm. especially just some of the people you interview sometimes it's like you believe in them so much and you think they have the greatest talent but sometimes it's like they're not so humbled about the opportunity you're trying yeah. to give them I would say it's the artist you know like the city you can only depend on the city for so much you, know? you can only depend on you know where you're going to perform what fan base you're going to get you know and how you're pretty much going to represent yourself as a rapper in the city you know, it's more of just a platform, it's where you live, you know. If you really want to be able to get out, you have to reach out, you know. The internet, you know, social networking, all that, you know, you have to do that out of city, out of state, you know, to get far. What up, it's me with your boy Scott under the rock TV, you know what I'm saying? We all here shining. We literally just glowing and shining right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> so everybody in my life. My name is Chris McCammick. I came to Rochester in 20, 20, 2010 for the post back pre med program at the U of R. Um, and I'm still trying to find a way to get through the finish line on that. Adult life has blown me a little off course, but uh, you take it as it comes. As far as my talents, um, I grew up wanting to be a comic book artist, so I have some history as a professional illustrator. I also have a background as an interactive multimedia artist in Hollywood and uh, making the web software that a lot of Hollywood uses. Um, so I have that, and I have some pre-med and some hard sciences and some experience with that. It's oh, and I and I was training to be an elementary school teacher for a while. I got most of the way through the masters, and really didn't like what I was seeing in education. So I'm glad to see the protests and the fight there. I, I have a long and winding road, man. That some of it is about trying to walk around fights, and some of it is about trying to figure out my place in the world. I was definitely moving, moving in a positive direction, and I feel like a, a, something that. I've learned from this is just trying to stay positive no matter no, no matter what situation, no matter how much pressure is on us to really look at the brighter side of things, to not always um, really think about what somebody isn't doing and we're just like more so thinking about what, we're, we're more appreciative for what each other, for what one another does, you know, not even just us but people that help, like mm -hmm. how Kiana made the flyer, like I really appreciate it, yeah. especially how like just dope it was, how dope it is. Like, yeah, it's just showing appreciation. People want a good story. They really want to like your story. So understand that you put things out in the world generally to a friendly audience. Um, and pe people feel nervous about that. People feel like they have self doubt about making themselves the center of attention because you know somebody's gonna be criticizing and somebody's gonna bring hate. Um, the first thing I would say is feel confident about putting yourself out to a loving audience because that's the kind of community people are. I just believe that about humanity. There was a time in my life where I was in a lot of, where I was in a really compromising scenario. And so I kind of turned to music to kind of like, because I'm, um, like growing up, I like listened to a lot of records and, um, and I could never really find that people's experiences, like their music, like, describe mine and so I'd create music to like fill that void like if I want to listen to a disco song I would write a disco song and learn how to do that or if I want to write a folk song that would fit 
how sad I was at the moment or whatever, or happy, I would write that. So I kind of just use that. As a who does this blog? Who is this blog directed towards? Rochester. Is uh, for me is Rochester. Is 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 us hoping you guys basically is helping everybody else because I mean at the end of the day it benefits for me because this is something like I said I enjoy something I kind of want to do for the rest of my life mm -hmm. um in different aspects and everything like that but it's mainly I'm doing it for them like mm -hmm. I'm doing it for like I said the struggling artists mm -hmm. who you know doesn't have it like that to do an art exhibit I want to be able to help them promote that and actually do the party or something like that you know what I mean yeah exactly or you know the rapper where nobody really is listening to him because like everybody is in Rochester oh they're whack yeah so yeah. I'm just I'm trying to help those type of people yeah most definitely that's that's one of the biggest biggest goals for this blog is to be able to bring business to you bring business to all all over the place wherever we want to bring business to that's the kind of power we want we want to be able to say oh this guy blows glass go check him out and then the next day he makes a hundred bucks just just because we referred somebody to him, yeah. you know, we can get get you a thousand listens. That's the goal, like we said in the modern day newspaper, but on the web. Hey, how do you guys come up with the names? Um, well, you know, we bounced through a different, a uh, bunch of different names to go through, um, and then somebody just threw it out there, and it kind of draws on our, our history, it draws on our familial ties, uh, draws on our ancestry. So we just decided to roll with that one. Yes. <laughs> it's the top. Who would you say? The top. Who would you say inspires you the most as as a producer, as a as an artist? As a producer, as an artist. Um, I say like excluding my group. I have to go with Tony Clef. Tony Clef. Suburban Plaza in general, they all are hot. You know, they're like it's just. You know, because he really he really incorporates like a lot of different genres and a lot of different sounds into what he does. And he can sing too, you know? And he, he got the vocals on point, you know, the beats on point, stuff like that. It's tight, you know? So it's definitely, I have to say, you know, Tony and Suburban, they really doing shit out here. You know, they're going to go far. They're going to definitely go beyond that, I believe. The why, why you do what you're doing is, we talked earlier about sound quality, audio, it's, that doesn't matter. Uh, because you're why. Why? Because you sat here and said, I asked you why you're doing that. You said, I want other people to know there's other avenues, other people that are doing things. And that your why is very valuable. Because um, we enjoy the why. We love the why. And we will always support the why. But I'm sorry, I'm just sidetracking. Well, no, that was beautiful. <laughs> I'm definitely going to use that in the uh, video. So if anybody has anything to say about the audio, he just answered that for us. <laughs> I'm definitely confident in my music. I'm definitely confident in myself. And my whole style and like how I go about making music and how I want people to perceive me. But I feel like it's definitely that tension, that frustration of just like, yo, like, I just don't understand. Like, like I'm really great. You just gotta listen. We have such a strong art community. Also, Rochester's always doing it big while Syracuse and Buffalo and cities like that are like kind of falling off. And Rochester's just that one city that, like, even though we lose things, we always gain something. Um, I was thinking about it the other day, and it's it's such a good name. I knew it was a great name from the jump when mm -hmm. you first told me it, but I feel like it ties in more and more as the journey goes on because I feel like a lot of artists, like you said before, they don't support one another, and I feel like I always ask myself why, and even with myself, like, why didn't I go to that show? And yeah. I feel like a lot of it comes from fear. And that might sound ridiculous or just absurd, but I feel like a lot of artists that don't feel like they're getting the support that they need mm -hmm. don't feel like they should sh show the support to everyone else. So they, they just kind of go under a rock. And yeah. they, everybody's just like under like under yeah. the city and nobody wants to rise. Because we got to like come together in order to rise. I don't think we're exposed enough to each other to understand that we need to support each other in that way. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it just takes a large thing for everybody to realize, oh yeah, we got to get behind it. Let's, let's take, for instance, Ferguson. Let's take, for instance, uh, um, you know, anything that's happening with that, which I, I love that. I, I love that. I love that stance. I love that movement. 
but we also, because that's passion, that's creativity, but now what do we do business-wise? Yeah, I always tell a lot of uh, artists, like going back to what you said before, is why you do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like it's, it's easier to be known for something else that you've done. You know, that's, nobody wants to, well, I feel like in Rochester, a lot of people, they don't want to listen because they're just like, who is this guy? First of all, it's like, who is this guy? <laughs> and it's like, I do the same thing. I'm not getting enough support, so why would I support you? You know, I feel like it comes down, a lot of people are afraid to support someone else because people don't want anybody else to surpass them. You know, they're just like, I gotta be the one. I gotta be the one. I feel like we got a lot of that in Rochester. And I feel like that barrier just needs to be broken. I feel like we need to accept this really learn, and myself included, you know, just learn how to just drop that completely and be like, wow, that dude's doing really, just let him inspire you, mm -hmm. you know? And it always inspires me, but you know, to not have that hatred deep down, our envy in our veins. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me once, envy is so powerful because it's, you can't get rid of it. It's just naturally in your veins. Mm -hmm. You know, if you see somebody with a hundred people performing at your show and you're a rapper, you're gonna, I'm sure there's gonna be somebody in the back like, go home, right? <laughs> right? You know, when they should actually be enjoying the show, show mm -hmm. some love, you know? Is that as a, as a creative, um, as a creative person in any field, you know, music, you know, the traditional art stuff, um, you know, being a cook or something like that, whatever, or big baby. And then I'm also fascinated by engineer. I'm fascinated by, you know, by other. What I'm fascinated is just seeing someone who loves what they do. Now, as a creative person, to be an artist is simple. That you can call yourself an artist, make some, do whatever it is that you do. Call yourself a desert. I don't think that's it. That, that's a. That's a. That's a, To me, that's the stupidity of it all. But what we need to be an artist to me is creatively solving problem. I'm not just about painting pretty pictures. And I'm talking about solving problem, the world's problem, not just through the painting and things of that nature, but but solving, understanding that your problem, the problem that you have, that you're trying to solve. It's got to be an answer that's greater than yourself. I have a, a friend from University of Rochester. He got in touch with somebody from BET, and she listened to his music, and she said, um, you don't say bitch enough. You need to, you need to degrade women. You need to um, say nigga more. You need to sag your pants a little bit. And I'm like, to hear those are things that they want is sort of like a big message, you know? What will this blog consist of? Okay. So the blog will consist of the newest mixtape to the business trying to, you know, the local business trying to renew their look mm -hmm. to the artist trying to throw an art exhibit, you know, trying to do something different to uh, just people's opinions yeah. um, on Rochester in general. To the homeless guy at the corner of Monroe and Field Street that stands outside with that sign every day, you know, we just want to be able to give you an outlook on everybody on all levels in Rochester, you know, and um, I feel like it will consist of bigger projects. It won't just be like so far in this beginning. We've just yeah. been shooting a lot of straightforward projects, a lot of um, extended projects will be involved with the blog and a lot of other other people's work that we haven't shot as well submissions. Yeah. Submissions. It's my boy Gorilla, Under the Rock TV. Thank you very much for doing this for us, man. I just want to say, you know, I want to give a shout out to mom, know what I mean? Mom, how you doing? I love you. Um, shout out to Puma, y'all holding it down. Uh, you know, yeah. Call me.